a very warm good morning to all my fellow colleagues of the teaching fraternity i would like to begin our day on a very positive note by quoting don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind be led by the dreams in your heart and i truly believe that that's what we all are here today to not only dream about a better future for our students but also to create one myself and nita garrett would like to extend a very warm welcome to the second day of the fgp on modern educational tools and pedagogical practices for online teaching organized by vidyalankar institute of technology in yesterday's session we gain insights from very round, uh, renowned academicians on very few ped pedagogical uh, practices and tools to make our online teaching more effective and i'm glad that you all have chosen to come back of course safe and sound to brush up your skills through day 2 of the fdp my dear teachers we are living amidst what is potentially one of the greatest threats in our lifetime to global education a gigantic educational crisis with most colleges of bound due to covid exam season this year was like none ever before we gave the students a good reason to celebrate but this time we need to be well equipped if the situation demands in future hence to throw light on different assessment and evaluation tools open source and new normal way of teaching we have with us our very own faculty member from vidyalankar family dr saurav mehta dr saurav mehta has more than 17 years of professional research and teaching experience in wireless system development altogether he is currently working as the chief academic officer and professor at vidyalankar institute of technology mumbai he is responsible for integrating academia and industry collaboration bringing innovation and entrepreneurship in academia research programs designing curricula implementing academic planning and policies human resource development and educational training for vidyalankar institute of technology mumbai he earned his be ms and phd degrees in electronics engineering from mumbai university india aja university south korea and inha university south korea in 2002 2005 and 2011 respectively currently he is also serving as technical and professional activity chair at ieee bombay section his research interests are in the area of wireless networks game theory and educational technology i would now request dr saurav mehta to take over the session and to address all very good morning everyone uh, and uh, thank you anaita madam for some kind words so let's begin with our particular session so let me just share my ppt with all of you <clears throat> so is it visible uh, just can someone confirm that so i am assuming that it uh, it is visible so i just uh, <clears throat> wanted to before i actually start with this thing just wanted to share a little uh, story about myself that uh, sir manish here it is visible yeah. okay thank you so just wanted to share a little story about myself so when i started my career i started as a like a professional uh, engineer uh, then i went on to become like a researcher and then uh, working as a like a independent consultant for uh, many companies especially in wireless network and this thing and i was uh, always fascinated by like a teaching and uh, i wanted to be a like a academician and i choose this thing but i can say that my real transformation as a academician started in 2014 2015 i try to understand like what is basically the education is all about and uh, what is this education as a uh, as a process and uh, uh, then i actually started my learning into this particular area so i can say that and i am sure that majority of the engineering faculty who are actually a professional but they then turn into like you know the teachers or like a professors and uh, they find it bit difficult because generally we never learn anything about like how to do the teaching in our curricula or even not uh, it is uh, as a part of like you know as a uh, our uh, uh, you can say education formal education there, there you can never find any component related to this thing 
and now i guess maybe aict and government of india mumbai university they are taking lots of initiative regarding this thing so it's a very welcome uh, steps i am sure that the new generation of the teachers who are coming they are already equipped with uh, all this kind of like a new technology they already know that what is basically teaching is all about and how to go about it so that part is taken care and it is a good sign so generally that kind of like a transformation i am sure that it comes to in uh, everyone's like the life and uh, in this my entire journey i can say that thing i would like to acknowledge especially iit bombay x uh, so the this is a mood platform mood platform by iit bombay x and they have floated a very wonderful courses related to like a teaching and education uh, technology so i have gone through like a mini courses from uh, iit bombay i have also gone through many coursera then edx platform then i have read multiple like a uh, un reports specially related to like uh, education and many technical and white papers that generally we do in our like a research or in day to day activity so i have gone through it so i wanted to acknowledge all of them uh, to make me i can say a better teacher so uh, in this uh, new normal obviously it is like a, a very un uh, <coughs> presidential kind of like a condition for all of us and it has changed many definitions and uh, what are the new normal uh, in uh, higher education that we are going to see and before i start i just wanted to take like a you know couple of minute to explain about like my institute so we are basically running five undergraduate program information technology computer engineering electronics and telecommunication uh, electronics engineering biomedical engineering and then we also have a post graduate program not just in mms but also in uh, information technology computer engineering extc especially in computer engineering we are also learning our phd program so at any given point of time in vidyalankar we have more than 3000 plus students uh, we have a very nice 11 acre uh, beautiful campus uh, i wish maybe one day we could organize this kind of like a program physically so that all of you can you know visit our uh, campus and uh, really enjoy the atmosphere around us and our three programs are uh, i can say extc trx and biomedical they are nba accredited and last year we have got like a nac a plus accreditation in a first cycle so it's a good achievement for all of us and uh, you can say the vidyalankar entire philosophy is that that we need to prepare our students for excellence and uh, through our various activities and policy we try to achieve that thing so starting with this basically i am going to talk about three points today number one new role of teachers then i am also going to discuss something related to like a open source tools that we have and then uh, assessment and finally i am going to summarize like my talk and uh, in uh, this entire presentation if you feel any kind of like a, you know have a doubt or query you can ask me and i know that there are many participants who are not from the engineering background so please pardon me uh, because uh, my experience and my teaching is mostly from the engineering background but whatever today i am going to discuss it's more like a general thing and i am sure that it is like you know 80 to 90% related to your uh, uh, your field as well so maybe there might be some little discrepancy for that thing but uh, in general if you take it from the birds view it will be the same for all the faculties and all different kind of like a branches right so with that uh, let me just begin with my presentation so uh, before we go deep into like our content and other thing the three things that i wanted to discuss i mean two things mainly so first i wanted to discuss about the teaching models i mean we keep hearing about like a teacher centric student centric and learner centric so what is our approach so especially in vidyalankar now we are focusing more on a learner centric i see that there are many colleges they are yet a uh, teacher centric approach i mean in majority of the activity it is like a teacher centric approach and uh, there are many institute they have started to migrate from the teacher centric to a student centric and uh, they are really doing uh, uh many activities or you can say 50 to 60% of their activity is basically a student centric 
and here in vidya lankar what we try to achieve it's more like a learner centric so we do not want it to be like a teacher centric we would like to be a student centric but then focus should be on learning thing so students should learn more and more thing so let me just give you one example so then this particular like you know the definitions will be <coughs> clear to all of you because throughout our presentation we are going to discuss about this kind of like a teaching models or a definition so teacher centric a very traditional one where a teacher goes into the classroom they take the classroom and they deliver the lecture so generally it's kind of like a monologue so teacher is just uh, uh, <clears throat> disseminating the knowledge so that's a very traditional kind of like a model and the entire world is actually followed that thing and uh, we can see that thing still we cannot completely get rid of this particular like a model and there is obviously some positive negative about this model then let me come to student centric so nowadays people are uh, talking a lot about like a flipped classroom so flipped classroom a very typical example of a student centric learning so in that you give some kind of like you know the learning material or maybe the video to the students so before they begin the class they prepare themselves and when they come to the classroom it is more like a discussion it is more like a, you know uh, uh, doing something together where teacher role from the pedestal it's becoming like a team member of a students right so that is a student centric now let me give you example of a learner centric so right now you can see that thing uh, lots of students or even the faculty members they are learning by themselves they are self motivated and they are looking for the opportunity to learn something so mooc can be one of the great example of like a learner centric where focus is more on uh learning the things what is your background whether you are a student whether you are a teacher that doesn't matter but focus is mainly on like a learning skills learning some important <clears throat> concept so that is you can say example of like a learner centric now about the approach now uh, typically when i started to study about this particular like a subject so uh, i take a top down approach so try to understand what is basically the philosophy or a foundation knowledge behind all this thing about the education then we are learning about so many like you know different models taxonomies and all this thing so what is basically the philosophy why this particular like a model has come and then we are coming down to like you know the processes and you can say the different model or where we are trying to design new processes so at that particular part we are coming and then the third plus is mostly about the implementation and i have seen that uh, there is lots of confusion among uh, teacher community about all these three aspect majority when we are talking about like a digital learning or online learning uh, people are mainly talking about the third part that is the implementation part uh, when we say about the implementation that means you are going to learn about the tools how to use these tools and make it like you know embed into your like a teaching or a teaching methodology or this thing so that's the implementation part but uh, i uh, personally think that it is better to start with certain philosophy and foundation knowledge so then at least we know why we are doing this thing and in case if you are equipped with that particular knowledge so you can design your own process you can design your own model so that will help you to uh, <clears throat> do this uh, uh, teaching job better way and then finally it comes to the implementation so when i am looking at the education technology or entire education i look at it in this particular like a three approach so and it's a step by step approach the first you should understand this foundation knowledge then models and then implementation so this in entire this talk i am going to touch upon little bit of like a philosophy because i know that if i just keep discussing about that thing it might be a bore and uh, we will uh, discuss mainly about the different kind of like a processes which are important because i uh, believe that once you understood the process properly and you know that how to design this process uh, in a proper way implementation will automatically happen and then finally we'll uh, touch to some implementation we are going to see some uh, tools or i wanted to share some of the success story that we have or even in that vidya lankar what experience we have that i would like to share with all of you so starting with this thing motivation so you can say the new normal is like you know completely disruptive change i mean in our case uh, the, i mean we went to 
college on saturday and then later on we come to know that thing from monday we do not need to come because of the lockdown situation so it was a sudden change and it took some time to basically grasp that thing that okay this is what is like a corona this is what is like you know it's a really like a, a serious situation and then we are actually going through like you know a big turbulence so at that time it was very hard to estimate the gravity of this particular like a uh, thing but yes we suddenly come to know about this particular change and it is a forced change it as i mean it is not like that that we wanted to have that change and it happened no it was like a forced change to uh, all of us and now <clears throat> uh at that time we were not ready about it i mean uh, i don't know about other people but at least i can say that thing i was uh, not completely like uh, ready even i'm not uh, able to even process that thing that we are going for a lockdown for a, such a long time and this particular like a uh, corona is going to be like you know it's going to be like a very very big uh, kind of like a uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, problem uh, for the country or i can say for even an entire world so at that time gravity was not there we were just thinking about that maybe like a 15 to 20 days might be the enough and then again we will come back to like our routine so that has been like a tremendous like a change disruptive change and uh, it is at uh, i can say as academician especially from the technology and science background it is also our failure sir, that we cannot, oh yeah hello. sir sorry to disturb it is yeah. not on the presentation mode yet the ppt oh but here i can see in my presentation mode okay let no, me no, no, now. no now and it is not been scrolling also sir so, oh really okay let me just yes, uh, yes. can you just check whether it is uh, because here i can see in a presentation mode let me just share it again uh can you yes yes Now? just a minute just a minute yes. yes 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 okay thank you thank you for the input okay yeah <clears throat> so i was talking about this thing that uh, as a technologist or you can say as a, from the science background your entire our uh, academia fail to see uh, it's uh, like a gravity now everyone is like you know talking about this thing now people have started to understand that thing and what i feel is that this particular situation has brought many changes in us so that changes could be at the physical changes uh, also this is bringing a mindset change into us behavioral changes and uh, finally it is also you know bringing some kind of like a skill set change so whatever so far we have a skills related to teaching i can see that thing there is like you know now no scope for it now we have to acquire a new skill set then only we are going to survive in this new situation so let me talk about all this particular like a point in one by one manner so uh, first let me just talk about that physical change i mean uh, health related issue so you can see that thing it is like a really very serious kind of like a issue i was discussing with a few of my doctor friends and we were just discussing about like a covid 19 situation and just i i just asked them that uh, what was like you know i mean uh, right now what do you think about this particular situation what kind of like a problem that people brings to you so they were just discussing many things and out of that uh, what i have derived is that mainly people are you know right now basically facing mostly with this two kind of thing because as a teacher i can say even i have gained weight some so uh, i can say that thing we our sudden movement or what we used to do in college you know run from one classroom to another classroom one classroom to another lab and all this thing we were like you know always doing some kind of like a physical activity in terms of like a physical movement and so many things so from last 3 months almost it is like a now stop so this is actually you know gaining i mean we all are kind of like a gaining weight if some of you are doing a regular exercise and this thing so that is a very good thing that everyone has to take care about the health that is a very primary thing because uh, uh, even when i discuss this corona thing with my doctor friends so they always used to tell me that if you keep yourself fit then only your immunity system is going to be very strong and once you have your immunity system strong then only you can fight with you know those kind of like a disease yeah so then when i was discussing with them 
so majority of the patients they come to them are related to like you know diabetes and blood pressure so then i was just randomly asking okay so these people you know where they are working and all this thing so they mentioned specifically two sector one is a it sector and another is a education sector and uh, i also see that thing that uh, majority of us are like you know facing this kind of like a overweight problem diabetes problem or a sugar problem blood pressure problem so it is really important that uh, this particular situation is bringing those kind of like a change so first job is that we need to prepare ourselves for some <clears throat> health related issues we need to work hard on that thing so what we can do obviously we need to make some changes in our food habits right now we all are at home so you know unnecessary junk food and all other things anyways it is like a cut down but still it is better that if we continue with the good habits everyone i am sure that when they are working they might have like you know different timings of eating but now their timing will be a very uh, i can say a proper schedule one at that time the people are taking a breakfast lunch and dinner so this good habit food habits we need to continue we all need to do like a yoga and pranayam which is really important for all of us and uh, we need to do like you know regular life and uh, this good habits we need to put it in our regular schedule and this should not just only for the lockdown period but it should be also included in our regular life then only i think we can uh, have like a, a fit body and once we have a fit body we can fight with this particular like a disease now about the mindset now this mindset i know that uh, it has like you know bring many worries to many people related to job then job security and uh, unnecessary tension so many teachers are dedicated always thinking about the students so they keep worrying about that thing what is going to happen to the like students so oh, we have not completed this <clears throat> kind of like a syllab uh, syllabus yet this is pending that is pending i also used to get those kind of like a query so it is you know generating lots of like a tension and this thing so only way ahead that i can see is that we need to accept this new situation we know <clears throat> that uh, this situation has bring so many like you know worries for us and uh, somehow once we accept it then only we are going to find a solution unless and until we are not accepting it we will not able to find any kind of like a solution so the best choice is that we have to accept this new situation maybe in future also we need to be live with like a corona so that is the future and we all have to accept it until and unless there is a <clears throat> change in some kind of like a environment or once we are ready with like a vaccination or something and the best part to avoid the tension and unnecessary worry is to do the meditation and uh, another good thing is that need to start learning new skills and new subjects so you know our focus will be on learning and then we can <clears throat> set uh, our mind for uh, this new situation now another uh, thing that uh, it is bringing is a behavioral change now as a teacher when i go to the classroom i am habitual with a constant feedback constant feedback in the sense i am looking at the students i am getting their facial expressions i am getting their queries i know that thing whether they are bored or like you know they are tired now so constant feedback i am getting but this has been completely changed in this like a uh, uh, online uh, paradigm maybe few students they are keeping their camera on so i can see them but uh, i cannot look at like all 60 students camera which is not possible so you know i am not able to get like a constant feedback so sometimes even it is like you know uh, worries me that whether uh, everyone is like uh, listening to me or they are just keeping the mic on and then they are leaving so that could be the reason and then i see that thing many of our teachers we have our own mannerism so when we have to go to like a uh, online teaching we have to come out of this thing sometimes you know we keep repeating certain words even we uh, unconsciously don't know about that thing right so and then there are lots of issues related to like a uh, language also when we are like in a uh, classroom when we are talking to a student sometimes in a informal ways and so students also take it in a light way because they understood the current but when i have to say something on a digital media i need to be very careful about that thing you need to be like you know be with uh, ready with a very like a formal language so that it should not convey any kind of like you know the wrong message to this thing so uh what is where so we have to get used to with the, this new feedback system new feedback system in the sense to whomsoever you are able to like a look 
or maybe asking some few questions to them and you try to get like a, you know the feedback from this thing and also we need to work on basically improve on our behavior that okay these are the things that we need to work on uh, this kind of like a mannerism we need to come out or we also need to you know work on our language or this thing sometimes jokingly we say something to the student but when we all are there physically we know each other intention but in a digital media this is like a really worried some so we have to be careful about those things so this is kind of like a behavioral change now what basically as a new skill set that we need to learn or it is bringing a new change into our like a learning so first of all that we have to switch from analog to digital uh, most of the teachers are used to with like an analog thing analog thing when i say so very traditional one you go to the classroom you take like a lectures maybe in a few uh, colleges you are teaching them with a multimedia and all this thing so you can say that you have started to migrate from the analog to digital but it is not a complete like a digital kind of like a uh, transformation and then we also need to learn about like a digital etiquette so this is very important i also discuss this with my students we just not like a teachers need to train themselves in a digital etiquette but also students need to be trained in digital etiquette because initially when we started with like you know the uh, online teaching and online platforms and all that thing people were like you know <clears throat> started to uh, uh, take it it like a very like a normal way they always keep their mic on they were not like you know uh, knowing about that thing that how we need to actually behave in like a digital platform if you have any question maybe you can raise your hand so all those tools are available on the platform but you have to follow those kind of like a digital etiquette and uh, in case if we are not able to educate ourselves in a digital etiquette then to take a online class will be very very difficult one believe me we have experienced that thing when at a at a time you know 20 30 students are speaking someone is keeping their mic on so that you know background noise is coming so loud that uh, uh, it is like disturbing to entire like a classroom so all those kind of like a things we also need to teach to the students as well as we need to train train ourselves so digital etiquette should also be the part of i can say now new curriculum where we need to train them that this is how we have to conduct online thing and a uh, very important one we all have to learn the digital skills and unless and until we do not acquire this digital skills i don't think so will be more relevant in this upcoming years to uh, uh, in upcoming uh, time or i can say years to come because only point to survive is to learn this new skills whether it is a digital skills or maybe it is related to online teaching and then finally it comes to like a tool set so if i have to say uh four thing the four key point is that we have to keep ourselves fit we have to keep our mindset set and ready to accept this new situation third point we have to make few changes in our behavior what the way we are taking our regular classes and uh, this thing and uh, there are some issues related to our mannerism or let's say related to language that we need to take care about that thing and then finally we have to acquire a new skill set right okay so in this thing what are the challenges that we are going to face so there are multiple kind of like a, you know the challenges that we are going to face the first and very important question comes to everyone's mind is that engaging student in our traditional uh, teaching also we are facing the challenge to bring the students to the classroom so how we are going to engage them on online where virtually we are not uh, i mean just we are connected virtually physically we are not there we are not there to like you know <coughs> take care about like a student so this is a big challenge to us and we all need to think about uh, innovative ways that how we are going to engage the student and in case if this brings lots of like you know opportunity for us to do the innovation also i'll talk about that in a little while and then another you can say is a, like a content making so now content making is also big challenge so whatever we used to prepare earlier uh, maybe like a ppt or let's say we try to get it something from internet and then we used to take it so now we have to be very careful about that thing because when we are using someone else material and when it is going into a digital media it may create a problem for you in a future so yesterday uh, so one particular speaker was talking about like a 
common licenses and all the things so these are creative common licenses are very very important and let's say if you have to use a image or something so you need to follow certain kind of like a rule so this content making is absolutely necessary then feedback uh, is also like a you know challenge for us now feedback could be from the students to teacher or teacher to students so how to develop this thing it's very important and another worry is about the assessment right now also we all are like you know uh, asking this question okay in case if we have to take a exam for a be students how we are going to do it what kind of like assessment we need to so in fact mumbai university is also coming up like uh, thinking about like a innovative way and assessment is really important so we need to completely uh, give a new look at it that how we have to do the assessment and i'm going to talk about assessment in a uh, great detail in the later part of my presentation then about the lab i think many question even yesterday uh, people have raised that how okay lecture okay we can take it online but how we are going to do the lab session how we are doing to do the practical sessions right so obviously uh, <clears throat> when we are talking about online teaching it is a inclusive kind of like a teaching where a practical labs projects uh, our normal lectures everything is going to be like included in that thing how to do that thing it's a question and there are several tools for it especially for computer and it it is like a bit easy because there are so many tools that you know students can do their like online projects they can do online coding and they can help us but especially for a students who are into electronics so let's say electronics telecommunication biomedical mechanical engineering civil engineering so how they are going to perform the lab so it's a big question and it's a big challenge for all of us so that we need to deal with it then i can say ipr copyright so again again uh, it is related to like your content making and when you are going to use some material uh, from the online so how we are going to you know take care about like a copyrights or in fact if you generating your own kind of like a material and uh, you have taken like you know a proper care to make sure that it is like a legitimate and in its proper so how you are going to protect your own copyright into that so that is also a question so all these are like a big challenge for us and uh, obviously uh, in case our institute they are spending lots of money in generating some specialized content so that content you do not like to leak in uh, open media so how to take care about that thing how we are going to you know protect about that thing so all these issues are related to like ipr and copyright so that we have to take mindset of a students so uh, earlier i talk about like a mindset of a teacher the similar kind of like a mindset of a students also need to be changed now uh, one particular like a positive thing that i can see in this covid 19 situation is there is a tremendous change in uh, students mindset so many students they are learning online courses doing from coursera edx various kind of like a platform so i guess maybe they have prepared themselves for online teaching their mindset is that orientation is there obviously now uh, it is up to us that how uh, we are giving them those kind of like enhanced experience in digital learning that is very important so that kind of like a mindset we also need to create among the students and students also uh, when i am talking about student it is not just the students but also it is including the uh, their parents because their parents also now need to think about it whether my child or like you know they are learning online whether it is going to be effective non effective they are worried so much about that thing and all these worried are like you know valid worried so i can say that we also need to counsel not just to students but also to the parents we need to tell them about this particular situation and how we are going to handle them it is good that if we have even dialogue with them so even they can have some kind of like a confidence in us uh, again digital etiquette so i already mentioned about this digital etiquette now collaborative work generally when we have a lab sessions or a tutorial session we can do this part very easily but now all people at are at uh, remote places how we are going to do the collaborative work so obviously this is a big challenge for us how we have to do with it now there are also some problems from the institute point of view maybe if you institute they may not have a proper infrastructure i can say the very basic need is a very good uh, broadband internet connection in entire campus 
unless and until we do not have this thing it will be very uh, uh, difficult to talk about like online teaching and digital things and all that thing so infrastructure is required uh, infrastructure not just in terms of like a uh, i can say uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, some uh, internet connection but also we need to prepare our classroom we need to prepare a, a different aspect of that in that way so on also there are so many like a technical issues that we need to deal with it now maybe a low bandwidth connection some tools are not there so we need to train to students teachers everyone like you know the staff members over there so these are some of the challenges that we have and lack of connect so sometimes we feel that thing there is a lack of connect lack of connect due to a technical error or maybe due to some kind of like you know the human error human error or suke or i can say that thing when the teachers are not properly like a prepared or something so we have to do as a lack of connect and then obviously one particular question comes as a financial uh, i was recently i was a speaker in one particular forum where somebody asked this question now that everything is going to be online so are you going to reduce the fee so this particular question uh, i think we all have to face in future what should be this thing and uh, let me tell you that uh, when any institute is actually preparing for this digital en enable campus actually it is a very heavy investment towards the infrastructure development technological development and all this thing so just taking it to online that doesn't mean that this is financial kind of like a reduction in fees or this thing but uh, this is a very important aspect and that need to be uh, debated on a large scale and i am sure that uh, we all are going to face this question at a one point of time in our life in uh, after the post covid situation right okay so uh, coming to the digital skills now <clears throat> when we are talking that what kind of like a digital skills are there so you know everyone has a different kind of like a uh, uh, opinion about it what kind of thing so i do not want it to name any particular kind of like a uh tools name because tools comes later on the first is very important in skill so i have identified that if you have uh this particular like you know uh six skills so it can take care of your entire online education it can take care of your entire like you know education stuff the first one is that uh we all should be able to use a social media because we can see that things students are very active on a social media so social media doesn't mean only facebook but it covers lots of things instagram whatsapp or blogs or you can say this thing so we have to uh, be prompt in those particular like uh, social media and we have to develop this particular social media skill and then i am sure that all of you are going to prepare your uh, content with a audio or a video and different kind of like you know this thing so at least a basic thing related to audio and video editing should be there and we all need to master over that particular skill i am not saying master means like you know should be expert into that but we should not be depend on somebody we should be able to do it by ourselves and uh, there are so many like you know uh, open source software tools and there are so many like uh, even online tools are available with that uh, help of that you can simply edit your video and audio because now uh, in a new era we all have to use this skills on a regular basis and then we have to make it in a proper way then another very important one is that how to create a content and sharing so i think yesterday's uh, lecture about oer was a perfect example and i think sir has explained very well that how to create oer so and how to generate that content and how you are actually going to share that content so there are various kind of like a platforms available to us just to give you an example lms system or a moodle right so uh in that thing uh, uh through this particular like a platform you are going to like you know share your content with that thing so you should even have a basic knowledge of that particular like a platform and how to create a content then academics analytics now this is really really important now in earlier case we could not have a detail analysis of each and every students performance but thanks to this new era now we are going digital and when we are going into digital you know you can monitor each and every different kind of like a parameter of the students so as a teaching community now we have to focus on this 
academic analytics we need to understand this academic analysis and based on that thing now we can you know do more customization of our teaching learning process or i can say the learning and other kind of thing so this academic analytics is very important now we have to start learning about that thing how people are you know uh, 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 using this analytics to analyze students is doing good in which particular subject which particular like a module you and i have seen that thing that some actually universities are giving them the flexibility to even map to which particular module or a concept they are not able to like understand and in which they are actually failing so from this particular analytics they are preparing their content their methodology in a better way now after that communication platform so again communication platform could be like you know uh, in case if you have your intra um intra website or like say internal like a website or a lms system or a different kind of like a communication platform uh, when i say the communication it should be the official platform where you can like you know do this thing especially what i mean to tell about this is we need to start creating a discussion forum or you can say discussion community so now discussion community is also like a new phenomena which is like you know emerging at least in india so it is a very well known concept in uh, open source but now this is also coming into like education so that you know the support is available to everyone 24 by 7 and all 365 days so this kind of like a communication platform you need to train yourself in that thing and then finally i wanted to come to the collaborative platform so when you are learning about all this thing you should also learn about some of the uh, collaborative like a platform where you know you can try to collaborate with a multiple students at the same time and not just with the students and let's say now uh, because of the digital kind of like a uh, <clears throat> learning we have even a flexibility to do the collaboration with somebody who is in like a us and uh, you wanted to take them one particular like a session on this thing or you wanted to collaborate with them on certain projects or something or some students like you know so now this is going to be like a future i can say so now we'll have even to give an example let's say vidyalankar is going to have mou with any foreign university and this foreign university and uh, vidyalankar can run certain program or a certain module together where we need to do a collaborative learning and that could be achieved with a collaborative platform so these are some of the digital skills that each and every one should possess then only it is like you know becoming very useful to transform ourselves into this new era so let me just go to the next slide okay so now online teaching now i wanted to tell you that online teaching even if i try to define it it is you know it's uh, the definition is continuously changing as new uh, terminologies are coming new kind of like you know models are coming into that thing so it is it is keep changing so for me it is even better to define what is not actually online teaching so when we are talking about online teaching i hear from lots of like a colleagues that okay we are just going to make you know everything on a ppt so i don't think so that when making just a ppt is like a online teaching a uh, few people they go like you know one step ahead they do is like a voice over the ppt and then they are giving that ppt to the students and then they are calling it as a like a online teaching i do not see that thing that is a online teaching uh, making a video is not a online teaching just making a video taking lectures on uh, some kind of like a digital platform is not a online teaching traditional teaching but it is generally on online mode that we are uh, doing a uh, few people they see that thing now we are taking a quiz and filling google forms related to food uh, feedback and all this thing so all these particular points are not actually online teaching online teaching is much more beyond that thing it is a experience that we are actually passing on to the students where students constantly feel that thing that i am learning something i am connected with my peers i am connected with my teachers and then you know the learning is happening not just in a classroom but 24 by 7 so to be very honest i do not have any proper definition or any kind of thing that what is like a online teaching so let me just share uh, one particular like a program with you let me understand what all of you uh, think is a like a online like a teaching so uh, i request uh, organizer to share the web link and then uh, password 
so let's try to understand what is basically the online teaching is all about so i can already see that uh, all of you can see my screen yeah so and i request other people also that please uh, feel uh, what do you feel about like a uh, online teaching is all about so many said about like a facebook e content digital from uh, anywhere interesting innovation virtual lab uh, i will request everyone please uh, go to www.mentimeter.com uh, and then you can see there is a code given 88485 so that you can put this thing so learning 24 by 7 okay interaction yes digital mooc education uh evaluating online everyone is able to see this ppt manish sir can you just confirm me yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah yeah so i request everyone please feel this thing let's take a pause over here let's try to understand how everyone is try to define this online teaching you know it is kind of like a big elephant and we all are blind and we are t- t- uh, t- uh, touching to one particular part and then we are saying that okay this is online teaching but it is not true online teaching is uh, much more beyond that thing and then from here i can see that thing there are several kind of like uh, inputs given by the people so flip classroom digital etiquettes virtual taking class online 24 by 7 so yes so let's wait until we have like a, some substantial number of participants okay virtual learning okay so this is a very uh, i mean a good exercise we all can see that thing that uh, how you know i mean this uh, uh, everyone is thinking about online teaching as i said we do not have any right answer for that thing so uh, only my worry is that thing whenever we are talking about like online teaching people are just uh, speaking in bits and pieces so it's a i guess it's a big zigzag puzzle where everyone is like holding one particular like you know uh, chip with them and then they are saying that this is online te- uh, teaching but online teaching is uh, uh, it's a big thing uh, and it should cover all this particular like a uh, aspect that uh, people are mentioning over here i can say flip classroom then i can say the imparting education taking class online students virtual learning self pace any time anywhere very nice so education should happen 24 by 7 so it's a good thing so i i am sure that uh, uh, many particular like you know even points will be clear to all of you also that uh, that this is how basically the learning is happening and how people are trying to define this online like a teaching okay so our cloud is getting bigger and bigger and i see that a uh, few words are constant so <clears throat> so without distance and border barrier yes very true very true about that thing so i can say what we try to achieve over here is like you know we all are trying to define certain characteristic of online teaching so <clears throat> we can say that thing if online teaching is something uh, but we are sure that it is covering or ticking marking all those particular like a uh, features so this will help us to define this particular like you know online teaching okay 74 okay nice wow 
and you know the very big thing is that no particular word is like a big there are so so many small small words so it shows that how every one of us are thinking about like a online teaching <clears throat> so i guess each one of us have a, our own definition of online teaching so very nice nice do we have more okay maybe we'll uh, uh maybe for 10 more second and then again i'll go back to like uh, my uh, slide so i guess maybe the points that i wanted to convey it is conveyed to all of you that uh, we all have a different idea about like online teaching and the summary that i can draw from this diagram is that that uh, we are actually trying to uh, define some kind of like you know the features of this particular uh uh new online like a teaching paradigm right okay okay so let me just go back to my presentation again uh is it clear hello yes can you see my yes, presentation yes yes okay yes, yes. okay so i guess maybe we all are clear on one particular point that what is not online teaching so uh, that's a good uh, kind of like a feedback that i have received from all of you so now uh, on a proper way we can define some of the features related to online teaching okay <clears throat> so when we are talking about like a tools so what are the tools that we all need to start learning about it so content delivery tools so when you are going to learn about that particular like a skill obviously you are going to learn about like a tools to give you an example g suit now recently in vidya lankar we have actually done the ms view training ms ms teams training so if some of you might be using like office 365 as like a official version so you know there is a ms team for particular like a tool is coming to you and it has so many features that you can like you know conduct your uh, online teaching in a such a great way so that is a tool then some of you i'm sure that using the g suit or a google classroom zoom as a platform or uh, maybe google uh, webex as a like a content delivery tool so these are different kind of like a delivery tools so i am sure that if you learn one or two tools uh, you will be used to with uh, other tools as well because um, all these tools have some common features like sharing the screen putting like online polls looking at the chat box so uh, these are features very common then assessment tools okay so whether we have to take assessment as a online whether we have to take it as a like a physical so there are so many tools related to it like you can you know i mean some of my colleagues uh, they are actually uh, taking a wonderful kind of like you know assessment tools they give them some online quiz and they give them uh, some online platform where completely randomization is there it's a descriptive type of quiz then there some of them even they are trying about like a crossword puzzle they are giving it to them so they are doing wonderful kind of like a exercise and uh, a different kind of like a things so in case uh, if we have a uh, enough time maybe i can share one or two like those kind of like uh, tools with you then feedback tool then teaching platforms then how to develop particular like a mooc so developing mooc also you require some kind of like a training because there are so many myths and misconception about mooc as well so that also need to be like you know bust and we need to learn certain tools related to me mooc and uh, delivery model then different kind of like a strategies i am sure that all of you are aware with the different strategies like you know collaborative learning think pair share what uh, yesterday samir sir tried to do is like a think pair share he took a you know uh, <clears throat> feedback from you then try to you know collaborate all of you on some certain ideas so this is kind of like a strategies different strategies that we wanted to apply and then flip classroom which is a very good uh, uh, model of uh, delivering the content then uh, nowadays lots of people are they are working on a pbl problem based learning project based learning research based learning so you, you utilizing those thing so how to create those kind of like a problem based learning so there are various kind of like a tools available to it i will discuss about uh, some of the tools with you 
in my next part of a presentation then there is a virtual lab remote lab so what you can do with those thing so you also need to learn about this tools unless and until you do not have this particular like a tools you cannot <clears throat> deliver actually uh, any kind of like a you know the implementation of your idea so you remember uh, we earlier the discussed the philosophy then the process and then the tools so tools comes at the lower part but a very important one because using the tools actually you are implementing the things right okay so what are the different advantage i mean we are saying that new normal is bringing lots of like you know the changes in our life so that is very true but it is also giving us lots of new advantages like just for example scalability now earlier you know i am able to teach only to like a 60 students or maybe i am able to reach to only few students or let's say few hundred students but now i have entire this world open to me i can go to a, a, a i can say practically infinite kind of like a number or you can say a very large number of students i can easily take care about like a scalability and the very best thing uh, what i like and i practice is that there is no now uh, border line between the lecture and practical we are not segregating that thing we are putting it as a together or if you want you can say that thing in your classroom you have bring the uh, lab or you can say in your lab you have bring the classroom so i cannot see any kind of like a border between this thing and this is a tremendous kind of like you know the advantage that you get with this you completely bring a new and innovative kind of experience to the students and i am sure that all of you are going to try this thing in upcoming semester then you know directly you can work on capstone project especially for it computer and allied branches they can work on those kind of like a project and let's say if i have a some collaboration with the uh, industry i can ask them to do the live project and they will then मेहता सर मेहता सर अनाहिका मनीष मनीष हेलो मनीष यस सर यस यस सर यस सर अनाहिका ला अनाउंस करा ले सर देयर इज सम कनेक्ट कनेक्ट कनेक्टिविटी इशू ओके ओके प्लीज आस्क अनाहिका टू अनाउंस Dear viewers, we were having a very engaging session from Dr. Saurav Mehta, but I think we've just lost certain uh, connectivity. Uh, there are certain connectivity issues, and we have lost lost connection with him. So uh, I would requ uh, request you all to just hold on for some time before we get connected to Mehta sir again.
you are all requested to leave your questions in the chat box so we can take more amount of questions uh, so that it will be fruitful for all so kindly leave your questions in the chat box Hello. Uh, am I audible? Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are perfectly, perfectly audible. 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 Okay, okay. So just can you help me? I am sharing my presentation where uh, people have missed. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, last one was related to like, uh, I am sharing my screen. So please let me know where all of you have missed. So this part was there. Just a minute, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, so audience, they have gone through these tools and uh, advantages of new normal that was there or it was missed? Okay, it was missed because I think okay, so you okay. were on live projects or multidisciplinary. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Fine. So uh, now I'm audible to everyone. So I was like uh, going through this multidisciplinary. Sorry for this technical error. I don't know how it happens, but uh, again, you can see that thing. If we rely completely on technology, so this kind of like uh, things could also happen. So we need to be ready about that. Okay. So I was like uh, discussing about like a multidisciplinary. So in a multidisciplinary, you can see earlier I was facing lots of like a logistic related problem and time related problem. So now this could be taken care. And now, you know, students are more encouraged to do the multidisciplinary project or even uh, uh, they can, you know, try to take like a different kind of like a classes from a different kind of like a faculty. So it would be a complete uh, good uh, approach and uh, it's a big advantage for us. Now skill based. Now in a skill based, I wanted to give you an example of like a Google HR policy. So Google has published that I think six to seven months back. So in that thing, they have clearly defined that now we do not want it to uh, consider as a formal degree. I mean, they are considering formal degree, but that is not a requirement from their side. What they want is that if you having a proper skill for a uh, applied job, that is more than enough. And another very important aspect was there 
that even if you wanted to get a promotion not necessary to have like a formal degree whatever uh, skills required for that position if you acquire you are eligible to get this thing so this is completely changing the scenario now just imagine the giant like a google is actually uh, implementing those like a kind of like a hr policy so it's a matter of time that other companies will also start following this thing so skill based is very important one so now we have to focus more on like a skill based kind of like education whatever we are teaching them there should be some kind of like a defined skill so that students get benefit out of it and this new uh, uh, era is giving us actually advantage for this and the very good thing is that no defined framework is that right now there is a no framework there is a no particular like you know uh, some uh, de facto things so that you know we are getting complete autonomy what we wanted to do how we wanted to define so we should take the advantage of this and we should make that learning experience in i can say in a wow factor that students say that uh, no this is how it should be the uh, <clears throat> uh, new learning and so this is giving us a great chance for innovation right so everyone can bring lots of like innovation in this thing and this is really really important one so we have to take care about we have to take care about that thing <clears throat> so uh, now let me just come to this thing there are some a uh, really uh, new and important technology which is like you know at the horizon right now and it is very important that we should sir, also start ha uh, hello sir, sorry to disturb the presentation mode is not on yet presentation mode is not on but i can see my presentation mode let me just let me share screen again now is it visible just a minute sir just a minute not yet nothing is visible right now nothing is uh, i can see from here it is like visible now now it has come yes okay so these are some of the new tech uh -huh. so these are some of the new technologies which i say that they are going to be like you know put a very big uh, impact on education sector uh, the one is augmented and virtual reality so even in vidyalankar and uh, some i can say instances we are using like augmented uh, reality for our education but uh, still it's a long way to go ahead to absorb this entire technology in our uh, uh, curricula or you can say our uh, teaching pedagogy and then there is a cloud technology so now you see that everyone there are so many vendors who are you know ready to deploy this cloud technology and your entire campus become like you know the cloud enable and this gives a tremendous uh, uh, prospect and i can say leap bounded opportunity for all of us to do the teaching learning and then ai is also very important why ai is important because in ai uh you know now uh, uh, online teaching will be there so you know helpline chat box and analytics and so many things are going to be a part of like our um, uh, day to day learning so in that ai is going to play a major role as we are going online so the blockchain is also going to be important from the security point of view uh, for our content as well as from validation of of different courses different certificates and all this thing and then i can see that gamification there are so many platforms nowadays they are giving you like you know flexibility to develop your own game and then uh, try to you know through this game you try to like teach the students about uh, a particular like a subject so these are some of the technologies which we are going to see it's uh, i can say great future in education point of view so again now i would like to take a uh, poll for that thing i think some of you have already started Uh, all of you can see my screen is it visible yes sir is it visible yes yes sir okay so here you can see that thing maybe uh, i just wanted to know what is your opinion about that thing what other people are thinking 
that with particular technology is going to be like you know the a uh, game changer technology in uh, education sector so uh, please let me know so we have identified this uh, five uh, main technology so what all of you can uh, think about it augmented reality and virtual reality cloud technology then i can see ai blockchain gamification okay so let's wait uh, how people are actually reacting okay because right now we do not have actually any particular like a clear idea that uh, what is going to be like you know key or let's say uh, especially in uh, in uh, indian uh, education system where we do not have that much funds so we have to prioritize our uh, choices so what could be that choices first we would like to go for augmented reality or maybe ai or a cloud technology blockchain technology gamification or if as a teacher can we do something uh, by our own and we can you know try to develop those kind of infrastructure for ourselves and uh, provide this a uh, great learning experience to students so i can still see that thing that uh, augmented reality is like a leading it seems to me that the computer uh, uh, science faculty are less in number that is the reason that we are not getting like a cloud technology and ai at the top okay so we'll uh, wait for a few more seconds and then we'll again go back to like my presentation so we'll try to understand that uh, okay so it shows that that uh, everyone is uh, identifying which particular technology is going to be like you know the future of education sector or how this technology is going to change this thing so we can say that thing majority of the people are actually thinking about the augmented reality and virtual reality so yes that is true and uh, especially for mechanical engineer and civil engineer that is going to be like a game changing technology because i do not remember the college name but i have seen somewhere that they try to teach students uh, uh, drawing with the help of uh, this virtual reality so they give some kind of like a uh, uh, code to the students students just need to scan with the mobile and then the entire model comes in a 3d you can rotate it so it's a perfect example of like a augmented uh, reality and uh, they were using very successfully in their teaching methodology so i was quite impressed uh, with uh, that approach so fantastic so i guess uh, Uh, we can clearly see that thing that uh, majority of the people they think that augmented uh, and virtual reality is there the cloud technology people are selecting less because it's more towards like a infrastructure development so once you have this uh, infrastructure cloud is a infrastructure then it is very easy to deploy all other particular like you know the component and all this thing right so great to have everyone's like a choice and uh, it's a fantastic so i can see that thing majority of the people they think that uh, augmented reality is going to be the key technology so now once we already know that this particular technology is uh, the key technology so we have to start uh, you know acquire skills related to that that is the only way so uh, now again i have switched back to my uh, uh, presentation is it visible yes sir yes okay so now now we have even seen the poll and then we have try to understand everyone's uh, opinion also so let's move to further so if i wanted to compare now nowadays now you know uh, there are lots of jog related to like a uh, 
covid and other thing earlier we used to say ac and bc so now people will start that thing uh, before covid bc and the post covid pc right so we'll see like lots of like a difference so what difference i can see uh, in this two is that uh, when i say the traditional approach it is before the covid 19 we can say that uh, majority of us were related to like a syllabus oriented we were focusing only on like a question and answer report writing and whatever we try to basically achieve was not useful for that society but now post covid i'm sure that with this uh, new digital technology what we can do is that we can see that it is a beyond uh, uh, syllabus thing uncovering the syllabus might be the major component in our uh, teaching learning thing we start using like you know the social media for uh, different purposes than pbl and rbl and whatever we are going to do might be the useful for the society as well so uh, finally uh, in this part of my presentation we mainly discuss that uh, what kind of like a post covid uh, changes that we are going to see and right now i have discussed there are many actually prospective to it uh, from the students from the institute management from the universities from the parents teachers from other stakeholders employers so all these prospectives are there but in mainly in this presentation i have discussed only on uh, majorly from the teachers point of view and then uh, some aspect we have discussed from the students point of view and then i can see that thing uh, there are few very important digital skills that uh, we need to master and what could be the upcoming technologies in education sector that we have to like you know start looking at it so these are i can say three main point takeaways from this part of my presentation so let me just go to the second part of my presentation open source tools so what i see as a new horizon is that that uh, earlier we used to have a digital divide now but because of this thing uh, there is a great boost in uh, i can say internet connectivity recently there was some article uh, published in newspaper where uh, they have mentioned that thing uh, that uh, internet connectivity uh, penetration is reach to almost 85% in india so it's a great great and a big number that i can say uh, we can see and then i am sure that if it continue with this particular like a pace uh, soon will be having a news that 100% kind of like a connectivity that we have achieved and uh, it was uh, also very surprising to know that that it is a first time in india that the ruler and the remote areas have surplus surpass the uh, metro cities in internet data consume so this is something which is very uh, phenomenal thing so i am sure that now we are actually answering to that particular like a digital divide and then what i can see is that there is a language divide also so because lots of people uh, they come on the internet but they do not get the content in their local language so they cannot take help of uh, or use of this particular you know fantastic tool called internet so that language divide is there so we can also try to figure out this particular like a language divide because as we are turning into like a learner centric mode our aim is that that whatever we wanted to teach to the student it should be learner centric in that case we may have that option also that student can choose their own kind of like a you know the language to learn this thing right so language divide also we need to uh we can see that thing it is now uh, kind of like a uh, dissemination it is already started but i can say not fully we have achieved over there then uh, whatever like uh, we have creating as a content as a students as a teacher as a assignment or something so it is of only to a individual use but it is not actually useful to the community or society benefit so we need to come up with a new kind of like a approach that could be benefit to everyone so there are some open source project maybe i can say that all of you can go to like a foci where so many projects i mean this some of the projects what i have mentioned over here are uh, just a few the recently they have added much more uh, like a uh, tools to that so these are some of the open source uh, project just for example like a python now i days uh, i uh, try to analyze what particular skills the students and teachers are learning so python is coming at the number 1 uh, actually rank that uh, majority of the students and uh, 
teachers are focusing on python they are learning the python they are completing so many course on python so it is a fantastic thing that uh, uh, people are learning then scilab so majority of the college they do not have like you know the official version of like a matlab in vidyalankar obviously we have a computer uh, campus wide license with us but then uh, alternative to that is a scilab that is open to so similar to that there are so many like a uh, different tools even i have not used them except for ec scilab and python but uh, there are many many uh, kind of like uh, you know uh, tools are there and uh, these tools are not just helping you to contribute but also help you to like you know uh, achieve certain kind of like a milestone in your teaching learning process so then there is a spoken tutorial so i am sure that all of you have now uh, actually experienced the real power of a sp uh, spoken tutorial i know that so many colleges they have floated this kind of like a fdp where they have collaborated with a spoken tutorial so they have to you know learn uh, the things maybe a python or a latex or uh, any any subject uh, which is available on a spoken tutorial and then later on they need to solve some assignment quizzes and all this thing so people are using this spoken tutorial at a great length and it's very good to see that people are making this uh, lockdown opportunity as a fruitful one so then there is a uh, you can say foci so here you can see uh, you can even go to their like a website here you can see htafoci.com so they are learning lots of like a project recently they have added one more good project that is like integrating your hardware with a scilab so i think there were lots of question related to lab yesterday that how we are going to conduct the lab or let's say if we are from the electronics background or from uh, uh other background so how we are going to you know computer uh, engineering computer science we can understand but for this this is a very good opportunity so you know you can try to connect a different kind of a hardware maybe students they already have the arduino board raspberry pi so they can you know try to integrate this with uh, this online tool and they can do so many different experiment different kind of like a projects and all the thing let me just quickly take you through after this particular like a slide so there are uh, very good uh, this one foci.in and a uh, very nice one and uh, through that various kind of like uh, you know the uh, uh, projects and other thing they have floated then other thing is that uh, virtual lab so virtual lab is a very big initiative by iit bombay some of our teachers are also contributing very actively in virtual lab so that is a very uh, nice thing maybe soon you will see that thing in virtual lab there is a vit tab also so uh, our teachers and students are working on that thing and then there is a remote lab also so using that thing you can obviously uh, uh, run those thing then there is a e yantra lab so now e yantra lab it was started again by like iit bombay so it's a very fantastic initiative so students they get like a, a embedded boards and a platform so using that platform they can make different kind of like a robots they try to learn embedded systems on that thing so that's a very very good initiative especially for electronics uh, branches allied branches like uh, sources and uh, already we have like a raspberry pi arduino board e bus is there online labs are there d sources are there so these are some of the platforms that uh, we all have so i'm i'm uh, requesting all of you to you can just type it this keywords in a google and you will get lots of material related to that or even the uh, you know the uh, some projects uh, related to that thing right so what are the things like uh, some new initiative that we are doing at vit so what we are try to follow is that uh, that we do not want it to go to like a traditional kind of like a assignment because whenever we go for like a traditional assignment uh, what we try to do is that that assignment is just available with a teacher only Uh, if teacher gets enough time, he is going through this entire assignment, and the students they are going to use it. But instead of that, we can take this opportunity to design our assignment in a new ways. So I am uh, uh, taking a pride in that. That many teachers in uh, VIT are actually uh, doing this kind of like experiment. It doesn't mean that we are not doing a traditional one. Yes, we are doing the traditional one also. But many of the teachers have actually. you know taken a different kind of like a initiatives for this thing uh, just to give you an example 
instead of giving them a written example they can go for infographics i will also show you one example of infographics what do you mean by infographics and what is the difference between the poster and infographic lots of uh, my students have even started with a wikipedia article so this is i'm sharing my experience i generally ask students that instead of writing like you know three four assignment in the semester why do not you contribute on a wikipedia so there are two aspect to it once you contribute to a wikipedia i know that thing uh, that what kind of like a technical writing skill that you have and when you are writing on a wikipedia you have to be you know uh, be uh, clarify about those thing if you have done plagiarism so immediately i can get the notice that oh this part is you know plagiarized from this thing you source that so there are number of editors available online which are keep looking those those kind of like articles now i have also experienced that there are some students they say that sir we are not uh, very good in uh, like you know writing english so i gave them another option that why don't you convert certain articles uh, technical articles i mean just to give a uh, example related to memo then uh, 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 wireless networks then related to like uh, you know lifo technology so all these subjects are related to my area which i generally teach to the students so i asked them that okay why don't you convert those uh, uh, good article available in wikipedia into your native language so that any person who is like you know not uh, well conversant with english but the content will be available to them uh, even in their native language they can you know try to convert that into like a marathi uh, gujarati uh, uh, some students even have done in a bengali so this is a fantastic thing so you can do even like you know this kind of like a contribution so this kind of like a you know idea you can give it to your student and then few students say that no we do not want to sir do any kind of like a writing part so i said no problem wikipedia even support the pictorial thing so you can ask them to specially ask students to you know take the photograph of this thing so i remember one particular assignment i have given to one set of students is related to you know you can why don't you just go around the campus and try to uh, take a photograph of different antenna and this antenna uh, photograph you take it you put it on like a wikipedia just write a few descriptive line related to that this is a yagi uda antenna this is a directional antenna this antenna is useful for you know the mobile communication so likewise so even in wikipedia is giving a different kind of like you know uh, aspect to that in fact that could be a different kind of like a workshop that how we can use actually wikipedia into our education and then there are so many tools available which convert a uh, wikipedia article into quiz so even you can tell the students to take those kind of like a quiz right so many thing you can actually do with a wikipedia so we are implementing that and then we also asked uh, uh, students to why don't you develop some kind of like you know the uh, video assignment in your video assignment related to experiment related to their project related to their other thing and this video could be available on youtube so that you know this particular content is not confined within the boundary of a college but it is go beyond that thing so other people who are actually interested they can also look at it and we have actually done this experiment we have actually tried to digitalize so many experiment and uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, we have received more than 1 lakh views and likes uh, sorry views related to those particular like a uh, videos because it is not just uh, vidya lanka students are accessing to those uh thing but uh, outside vidya lankar there are so many students who are actually uh, going through those kind of like a uh, videos and they are giving their very good comment some of them have actually given us a very critical suggestion which we can take care in a next thing then we also ask students to do like a open source project and uh, we have done some kind of like an interactive board so then uh, pbl based and uh, pro project based kind of like a learning that we are doing so let me just take you to few photographs so this is infographics this i have taken from a uh, uh, popular uh, science magazine so this is a very wonderful kind of like a infographics you can see so within a entire picture you can see what is this subject is all about what is its like a generation what is its application what are some of the in, in, uh, important like a characteristic just looking at those particular like you know thing uh, you can remember so you know this is a very good kind of like a assignment student can use it as a last minute revision for themselves looking at the picture and i am sure that visual information is more important compared to the text information so once you look at it you can get this kind of thing this is very nicely done 
and if you would like to see uh, many of uh, my students they have generated a uh, infographics later on i will give you the link over there you can go and see how students are doing obviously this particular infographics has been done with a professional artist but uh, we do not need to be like a professional artist there are so many tools available which help you to create this kind of like a uh, infographics right so this is one example that i wanted to show these are some of the blogs that i am running and uh, students are even actually contributing so there is a word plus there is a blogger this kind of like a platform that you can utilize uh, for uh, <clears throat> uh, teaching learning process this is one example this is by like you know experiment uh, students are learning something right so this is kind of like a uh, project i have given to them uh, and that was related to their like a embedded or a mini uh, project system so uh, with audio visual they try to like you know learn the system and then there is a raspberry pi so i am sure that all of you are uh, aware with that thing so no need to like uh, discuss in more detail about that thing so with that you can do so many different project like a, a sensor network super computer home automation wildlife monitoring robots you can make gaming devices you can make similarly there is a arduino board also and various version of arduino board so you can also do so many projects related to automation controlling different interface and gaming and all that thing kind of thing right and then there are some open source uh, uh, standards all also available internet of society where also your students can you know contribute by giving certain kind of like a suggestions and all this thing so these are some of the ways by which you should make students aware to do their assignment and as i am telling you now with this new digital era it is giving us lots of like a opportunity to do the experiment so all of you can do this kind of like a experiment and let me tell you that uh, we are getting like really good kind of like a response to that you can even make your own internet radio this project you can give so that you know your cultural program technical activity education with fun that we can cover in this thing you can make your own youtube channel then uh, this particular like a pro because i am also very much interested in astronomy so we bring this particular like a project where we have created a radio uh, telescope and through this telescope students like you know learn to that thing so here you can see in picture that we have implemented this radio telescope and students were like you know learning lots of thing about uh, electronics communication through this particular like a project okay <clears throat> okay so now i wanted to come to uh, one particular like a last part of my presentation that is related to assessment tools and i am sure that this assessment tools are really very important to all of us so let me just take you through that thing and i always wonder when we are taking exam uh, i am taking exam to get feedback that what i have teach to the students whether it is uh, like so is this a feedback for me or it is feedback for the students i always wonder about that thing then i am also curious that i wanted to know what students know or what we want to know that students should reproduce it so i am sure that uh, all of you have also come across this particular kind of like you know the questions um throughout your like a uh, teaching career and it is very confusing and sometimes we feel that thing the our education system or especially like our examination system is like you know flawed we need to make some changes into that so now i guess maybe it's a right opportunity for all of us to uh, try to rectify it and try to make it in a more better way that doesn't mean that old method is like a, a bad one or this thing no we need to constantly bring a uh changes into this particular like a method right so uh when we are talking about like a uh, assessment there are basically five uh principle of assessment so this is again we are talking more on like a uh, process part and uh, what should be the process so whenever i think about the assessment it should be like a fit for the purpose what is the fit for the purpose means we need to have a clear cut definition what purpose we are doing the assessment we want that student let just for example if i am going into the lab and if i am asking the students that uh, i am giving you this multiple choice can you just tell me which particular like a choice is this one so this is not going to be like you know the perfect fit for that particular like a purpose when i am going into the lab my purpose should be there that you need to implement something you need to like you know design something and that design is going to be this so whenever we are doing this assessment the first question that we need to ask ourselves is whether it is a fit for that purpose or not now coming to the second principle 
second principle is about the authenticity authentic or you can say whenever we are design something it should be very authentic that when students are taking particular exam they should feel that thing no they are you know go, they are looking at as a like a learning opportunity rather than just giving as a exam it's authenticated it is going to be properly checked it is going to be like you know properly like a uh, done uh, the question the difficulty levels it's properly done we have given them a proper number of like you know options option should not be the more so then you know the entire purpose of the exam is going to be diluted so there are various parameter to it so this gives the authenticness to your particular like a exam so we need to make sure that whenever we are giving this experience we need to make sure that students are giving a proper authentic exams then when we are doing kind of like a assessment we need to be fair fair in the sense we need to give them a rubrics uh, let's say if you are measuring them on uh, uh, lab work so you need to define that how i am going to divide this lab work into different kind of like a rubrics and it should be fair with everyone it should not be you know like a favorable to some students and not favorable to some students and also it should be a reliable process that process itself is like a reliable just for to give you an example now if you wanted to ask let's say uh, a particular like a individual question and you wanted to ask this individual kind of question assessment in the class of like a 100 student so then it is not going to be a reliable system why because you know it is not possible to gather each and every individual and then you are spending your entire time and then also the students are going to be collaborated so this is not a reliable system yes if i wanted to take a poll in a class yes then it is a reliable system then i can see that thing people are giving a poll or their particular like a suggestion and then it is working in a proper way so fair and reliable system is very very important then also whenever we are offering any kind of like a exam we need to ask this question are we using this exam uh, to prompt student to do some kind of like a deep learning in that subject or we just wanted to test that like a memorize memory uh, uh, ability right i am sorry to say that but the the examination through which even we have graduated is mostly to test our ability of like you know the memory that how good is our like a memory so here the learning part is basically the missing so this is really really important that uh, we have to see look at it at the learning part and uh, it should be provide some opportunity to students to look into that uh, matter very closely very deeply right so that is the fourth principle the fifth principle is that whenever we are giving it should be a manageable exam and efficient right now just to give you an example i was thinking to give some kind of like a, a hands on material but then i thought that oh number of participants are like you know uh, more than like a thousand so am i going to like a manage those thing am i uh, going to like imp uh, implement like any efficient method to it and then i come to know that thing why don't we like you know start with like a some uh, polling system and let's do this thing so it's a efficient way so we also need to think whether the system is manageable and efficient right okay so once you know about this five principle now let's try to understand what are the functions of assessment so these are very important functions uh, why we take assessment so maybe we have to do a couple of uh, this particular functions or maybe all these functions or maybe we uh, try to achieve you know uh, only one particular like a functions of it whether my assessment is i am designing to give a uh, feedback to the students about their progress or it is a feedback about myself i wanted to give a grading system so that they are motivated to do better or do something good or i am uh, try to segregate a certain kind of like a, a thing uh, just for example je main when why we are taking this kind of like entrance exam because we wanted to select certain group of students right so whether i am achieving uh, doing the assessment to select those kind of like a students then i can say that thing uh, my assessment is making a students influence in our teaching right now when i am going to take a assessment i make sure that students should go through this kind of like you know the learning pattern or a learning objective so that uh, i am trying to influence those students so i whether i wanted to influence i wanted to make sure that that there is a satisfaction okay assessment we are taking is generally always the last part of 
any particular like you know teaching learning process and so that uh, everyone should get like a satisfaction that okay this is like you know wonderful things that we have done we have given this particular like exercise and i am feeling that thing it's a uh, giving me a good particular satisfaction right so completing learning teaching okay after giving this exam now i am done now i will be starting a new particular like a learning or i can say the whatever the plan of learning uh, we have achieved uh, objective that we plan are all achieved so that's a end of this particular thing or maybe we just wanted to make sure that whatever i am doing is like accountable to all external uh, stakeholder right so uh this is also uh, like a very important one uh, because we have to answerable to our like employer we need to answerable to parents so there are so many like a uh, stakeholders are there so we have to like you know uh make such a system that uh, reliable system that should be guaranteed that thing right now there is a utility formula so whenever we have to take a particular like assessment we need to make sure that uh we are fulling on this all this kind of like a utility so whenever you have to take particular like exam so and i am sure that all of you are familiar with the word utility utility means what is the usefulness of this particular uh, system so you can say the first one is reliability reliability in the sense this entire process should be reliable enough so how we are saying that our experiment should be like a reliable similar to that examination process should be reliable which we should be able to like you know take on a frequent interval with a proper rigidity and same kind of like a result that we could be like able to reproduce it what could be the validity of that thing right and whether it is going to give any kind of like a positive educational impact or a negative uh, education impact this is very very important right and then finally what could be the acceptance uh, of uh, this particular like a exam so this grade is going to be like accepted it is useful to us what is its weightage and then cost when we are uh, putting the cost it is not just cost of uh, uh, money but a human power infrastructure so all that things comes into this particular kind of like a cost so this is very important so this simple formula is that r multiplied by v multiplied by e multiplied by a, multiplied by c but i am sure that this is doesn't work in that normal like a numerical thing it is always depends on our uh, assessment uh, purpose uh, all these components vary on uh, more or less in uh, some gray areas right so that we have to take care about that thing now when we are doing this assessment we need to make sure of this particular assessment align that what is our learning outcome what examination we are putting whether it is learning to teaching learning activities it may happen that and this happens many times actually in mumbai university that we are defining some kind of like a learning outcome and then someone who is not involved into that defining the learning outcome is setting the exam so that students get confused oh these are kind of like you know the teaching learning activity we have done but this is not there so then entire purpose of assessment is not going to fulfill so we need to make sure about this assessment al alignment and uh, we have to Uh, make sure that all these three corners are properly touched and they are synced with each other then only we'll have very successful assessment now when we are talking about assessment cycle there are basically six part to it number one design the assessment uh, so in that thing you take a various kind of parameter into constraint uh, like your uh, institute policy or department policy guideline from the university and all that thing or maybe some limitation of our own and uh, we design this thing based on that thing we construct this entire activity so that uh, uh, that you know the what could be the like a time limit to that how we are going to uh, whether we wanted to have like a, a vigilance in that or we do not need a vigilance it is it going to be like a group activity group exam non group exam so all those different kind of like a blocks that you construct within that thing then we go to conduction so when you go to the conduction then you think oh this exam i need to conduct online offline or how or maybe with the presentation with this thing so how i am going to do this conduction is very important then fourth part evaluation where you are going to give them the marking system right so you are going to give them the grades marks and based on that you are going to give them the feedback 
that okay so and so students have not scored good in this particular area so that students can you know work on this particular area so this is like a feedback now very very important one assessment analysis now after doing this thing and i am sure that all the college they are doing their result analysis so what is this basically result analysis all about result analysis is uh, actually telling us that where we have gone perfectly right where we have gone wrong what we are doing in a good a good way what we need to improve further so it is giving us a very assessment uh, good analysis about that thing so based on that thing we try to develop our new teaching learning process so this assessment analysis it's a very very important aspect and then uh, in digital era as i said everything now we are going to get as a like you know analytics so now we have to develop this as a skill so if you remember in a digital skill also i have mentioned that analytic skills they we have to develop so using this digital analysis and this thing we can make our assessment more rigorous kind of thing right and after that uh, what is our assessment we have done so we take lots of learning out of it and this learning we are putting into our future planning and this entire process it's running in a cycle then again we go to the design construction conduction so this entire thing works in a completely circle so there is no end to it right or there is no start to it it is always in a loop and a closed loop it is always keep working that thing so this assessment cycles we have to keep it in mind now models so this i am sure that all of you are very much uh, aware that uh, what kind of like a models that we have so very good uh, and very important models we have is a summative test so that is the end uh, examination and semester examination then formative test so while the teaching learning process is going on we take several kind of like a test so it could be a direct test it could be a indirect test and uh, uh, we try to you know try to balance between those thing and try to make sure that we give a proper kind of like a test to students so that uh, we can get a proper feedback to adjust the things uh, from our side right and what are the tools for that so if you see in examination tools we have open book test tweezers closed book test tweezers why why we have take away test is that multiple choice is that discussion is there essay type writing is that group test is there collaborative is that project test is there so you just name it i am sure that once you try to uh, give the different kind of like a names obviously you are going to get like you know different kind of and each and every tool they have their uh, advantage and disadvantage let me just uh, take you through one particular like a uh, option uh, one uh, tool is a open book now when to use a open book and how to use a open book so there are many misconcept related to open book uh, generally when we say the open book we tell students that okay whatever material you wanted to refer you can bring those kind of like a book so many of the faculty member they take this thing okay this is going to be like you know open book kind of like a test they can have so they try to find out some uh, particular like a question uh which is not there in this particular like a book but it may be directly available to book no it should not be like that when we are taking about like open book it is the most difficult exam that somebody can take uh and uh, i have myself experienced that thing so uh in open book test it is generally a question is open ended when there is a open ended question you can see that thing there are multiple kind of like a solutions possible and yeah maybe some uh, solution might be uh, feasible some solution might not be feasible but we cannot say that that approach is like a wrong so that approach is like you know uh, we have to see so i am just giving this one particular example of open book similar to that in every closed book so right you know at what level you wanted to utilize this particular like a tools exam tools that is up to you and there is no general method to it or there is no perfect guideline to it i think as a individual teacher you are the best one to to see that thing so i uh, uh, use uh, always like a open book test then i take a take away exam then i also take essay type so when i have to see that uh, teacher uh, when the students have to write a technical stuff do they have the proper ability to uh, work on this thing uh, i mean uh, work on any kind of like you know the descriptive thing because as a engineer in future they are going to like you know lots of technical reports so do they have this kind of like ability to that so if i have to judge that thing maybe i can go for like essay kind of like a uh, type of test right 
so depends on various kind of like assessment and all this thing we have to use this thing right so now with this uh, i i just wanted to show you these are some of the references which all of you can uh, go through it if you like so i have taken uh, many particular like apart from there and uh, some of the good courses which i have gone through it so i am also suggesting all of you if you are interested maybe all of you can also do these courses so iit bombay x courses i already mentioned they have offered many courses then i have uh, particularly like the university teaching by university of hong kong so many many uh, things are clearly defined assessment in higher education by aramis university rotterdam so it is also available in a coursera education related courses by university of felicia at urban campus so there is a series of eight courses fantastic course so if you like that maybe all of you can go through i am also following education department of specially to indiana university purde university they are uh, doing amazing work and uh, lots of like a good thing uh, they are bringing as a model and beside that there are so many like a uh, reading reports and other thing if all of you are interested maybe you can give that as a feedback so that uh, i can share this reports and other thing with uh, organizer so that they can uh, uh, share with all of you and now i just wanted to thank you and uh, whatever the question now we will definitely take the question but i also like to uh, welcome you for the collaboration if you feel that you have a very good success study very good like a uh, uh, detail analysis related to that success study do uh, 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 share with me i would like to uh, put it as a like a book chapter as a case studies and then we can you know combinedly work together on this thing and then uh, <clears throat> you can also visit my website and this is like my official mail id where you can uh, write me a mail and uh, if some of you are on a linkedin and would like to connect with me on a linkedin so this is my uh, qr code directly you can scan it and you can connect me on linkedin so uh, in linkedin also i share lots of uh, material and resources related to education technology so there also we can uh, you know be in touch with each other and we can discuss with each other so with this thank you very much for your patience listening i know that for a few point i have gone bit uh, quickly but we also have a time restriction and i need to respect that also so again uh, going back to uh, uh, organizers so now we can take it on some question and answer Uh, thank you, Meeta sir, for briefing us about the new normal way of teaching. It was a great session that focused about incorporating new methods. Now we have a few questions from our viewers, uh, okay. and the first uh, question, which has uh, been asked quite uh, often, I'll just go through that. Uh, so the, there are many people who want to um, know about the blockchain technology. They okay. Would like you to elaborate a little bit more on the blockchain technology. okay so uh, uh, i i am not a expert on basically a blockchain technology so even i have started to learn about this particular like a blockchain technology so what uh, i wanted to uh, why i wanted to use a blockchain is that because in education you can see that in digital privacy is going to be a very very big part also uh, when we have to take a different kind of like a assessment or when we are issuing certain kind of like a certificate to the students we nowadays we see that there is lots of like a fraud cases lots of like you know the copyright issues comes in that thing i wanted to make my uh, uh, content as a secure one or i wanted to make sure that whatever my students are generating their feedbacks or let's say this should be like a very secure so blockchain will be the driving technology to make sure that all those things are particularly like you know uh, secure and give me a uh, very uh, uh, <clears throat> i can say a uh, validity point of view let's say in future uh, some students have uh, passed our one particular like a value added course in 2017 and now uh, some uh, 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 i can say employer in 2030 wants to validate whether he really actually passed and done some come good like a work in that thing and that kind of like a query can come to me and i can validate thing so in uh, blockchain technology it will be very easy for us to keep those records do those kind of like a checking no tampering could be possible at all so nowadays we see from the university also 
that there are lots of like you know fraud cases they temper to like uh, their results they temper to their like a uh, uh, manuscript and they temper to like you know the uh, the uh, uh, scorecard and all this thing so that malpractice will not be there completely no one can interfere into that so that is one aspect another aspect is related to content also right so there are many things which students would not like to share with other so that they wanted to make sure that it is uh, the, be there as a like a uh, private content as a secure content so that is also possible using like a black uh, chain technology thank you now sir. let me just uh, okay yeah okay uh, our next question is asked by uh, amreen khan uh, and she hmm. wants to know that uh, how do you take attendance online yeah so in online there are actually number of tools available proctor tools are available so if you like a uh, pay them some kind of like a subscription fee so just to give an example pearson is actually providing this particular like a uh, facility uh, then there is a uh, one more platform i'm not recollecting the ram right now so uh, what they do is that they give uh, their own like a uh, software which is continuously you know monitoring your facial expression they are continuously monitoring whether you are like you not surfing anything on your web thing or you are not like uh, going on to different pages so this kind of like a uh, softwares and other things are there it depends what kind of like a uh, services you want so you have to subscribe like that and uh, you get uh, this uh, uh, full facility so that attendance can be properly monitored uh, even the during the exam time you can properly monitor even you can get the analytics that students have uh, uh, spent what kind of amount of time in which particular like a uh, questions right so lots of like uh, analytics are available so that uh, i can even come to know that thing which particular part goes very difficult for the students easy for the student so it is not just restricted to attendance but it could be used for many other purposes thank you sir our next question is uh, by dr sanjay shitole and by yeah. g george uh, hmm. and they want to know what is the difference between tbl and rbl what what are they and elaborate something to more about it okay so uh, uh, as per like uh, my understanding so there are like a uh, lots of literature uh, related to like a uh, pbl and rbl so just to give you an example uh, pbl is mostly like a uh, project based thing so there are few people who actually go by some kind of like a uh, open statement or see some kind of like you know the they give some kind of like a statement uh, where there is a problem now just to give you an example i will say that thing that uh, uh, covid 19 has uh, bring lots of like a uh, worries in education now when i use this particular like a uh, statement you can treat it as a like a general statement but when i ask students to look it from the problem perspective they can try to figure it out what are the okay what could be the like a uh, problems in that thing they need to figure it out then they can try to you know propose some kind of like a uh, solutions to it or let's say may, maybe i can ask this uh, kind of like a question to that that uh, i wanted to you know uh, develop certain kind of system with certain kind of like a functionality can you give me the designing of that thing so that kind of like a uh, statements are also consider as a problem based statement and you will find lots of literature related to that now using uh, rbl so that is a research based learning problem now on, i i wanted to give you one very good like a uh, uh, uh example and that is in history also it's recorded so all of you about knowing about the heming hemington weight or uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, that uh, one coding system that we try to solve with this thing so uh, what is the name i'm not uh, uh, recollecting right now sorry for that so uh, yeah so when hemington and all this thing they put this particular like a challenge that if we wanted to solve this particular like a uh, code so we have to find out the distance between this two and uh, within this distance how to do it in a very efficient way so this particular problem was a very big problem and then it was like a uh, uh, put it in front of the students uh, by a professor and then said anybody who can like solve this particular like a problem it's consider as a like you know that uh, okay you are passed this particular like example so uh, that was one of the example so let me just recollect that uh, students name so uh, another example that i did is about the digital algorithm now this how this digital algorithm is actually developed so it is a one of the good example of you can say rbl based so digital as a professor he posed this question to the students 
that okay we wanted to make sure that there is a shortest path available for you know he was defining in a mathematical term and later on this becomes like a fundamental uh, uh, for a telecommunication or i can say the internet uh, entire technology which is working on a shortest path technology so he posed this question to the students and then based on that particular like you know uh, solving those thing uh, students are working on this thing and they come up with those kind of like a solution which right now we are knowing as a shortest path algorithm or a disjust algorithm so you will find so many this kind of like examples in a history so this is come out of like you know rbl kind of thing yeah i hope Thank that i sir. answer those uh, question yeah, yeah yes sir and uh, we'll go for one final question at the end Uh, okay. So, uh, Professor Uday Kashyap wants to know that uh, could you huh. explain the role of mathematics, especially operation research in gamification? So, <clears throat> there are many kind of like a, a fundamental things which we have. So, I do not know much about like operational research, but uh, I do know about like a game theory. But when we talk about like a game theory, it's a branch of like a mathematics. It's not about like a designing a game. so that's lots of people they get like a confuse about that thing so there are many concept related to those like with information without information then non zero sum game zero sum game so if you see the different kind of like a boards games are one of the good example or even a sports you can say is one of the good example of a zero sum game right so uh, <clears throat> uh mathematics you can uh, try to teach the students with uh, gamification let me just give you one example uh every one of us has played a monopoly monopoly or we call it as a naya business or new vyapar that is as a like a game right so what is this this is actually a game so through this game we try to teach the student few certain concept what are those concept what is buying what is selling what is transaction what is bank how we can you know what is tax what is like a bonus so all those keywords students learn about that thing they keep playing on that thing so run so similar to that we can also try to uh, make game to make some kind of like a understanding about mathematics now uh, let me share one, one of my experience so i have designed my own card game it's actually a modification of one particular like a very traditional card game which we call it as a collecting 10 or we call it as a like you know uh, the sap pakad in uh, hindi we call it right so uh, this game i have done some modification now through this game i try to teach student some of the uh, good concept related to like a probability theory right so in probability theory how you have to go about it and then uh, what is like a normal like a distribution like a curve how you have to utilize to this thing i do not have enough time to even um, uh, you know i mean uh, showcase this particular like a game or this thing but uh, in future if any opportunity comes definitely i would like to showcase this game to everyone so uh, by using those kind of like a game yes you can uh, uh, educate students in mathematics thank you thank you meta sir for addressing our viewers now uh, as we are entering a new growth phase your suggestions were very timely i believe uh, that we can all benefit immediately from the methods suggested by you and uh, we will surely incorporate your suggestions in our teaching method methodologies once again uh, thank you so much for your stimulating talk Yeah thank you thank you very much to entire like a uh, organizing team for providing me this opportunity to share my experiences thank you thank you all thank you sir thank you and to sir. participant as well <laughs> thank you sir uh, i would now like to call upon uh, professor ambadas uh, deshmukh to deliver the vote of thanks hello good afternoon everyone on behalf of the entire first year fraternity and on my very own behalf i extend a very hearty vote of thanks to dr saurabh mehta for showing for and sharing with us your opinions thank you sir i would also wholeheartedly thank all the delegates for their active participation on that note i would request all to fill in the feedback form for this session which is available in the chat box please join us once again at 2 pm thank you